Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's council meeting. I'll call the 10th regular council, 10th regular meeting of the Common Council of Order. Ms. Madam Richards, please call the roll. Bauman? Here. Sorry. Bauman? Here. Deberg? Here. Eberg? Here. Serta? Here. Davis? Here. Graf? Here. Kittleson? Here. Manny? Here. Meyer? Here. Montemayor? Here. Radke? Here. Sigali? Here. Stefan? Here. Susha? Here. Van Akron? Here. And Vanderweel? Here. 16 present. Quorum's present. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that we dispense with the reading of the minutes of the last Common Council meeting and the same stand approved is entered on the record. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Second. Under discussion? Not. All those in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Next, I'd ask uh, Alderman Montemayor to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Montemayor. <clears throat> Mayor's appointments. Attorney McLean. This is dated today's date. The honorable members of the Common Council hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Chuck Butler to be considered for appointment to the Coalition Ambulance Quality Assurance Committee to fill the unexpired term of Steve Schuffner, whose term expired 4-30-06, signed by the mayor. And that will lie over. And uh, <clears throat> Cleo Messner to be considered for appointment to the Historic Preservation Commission to fill the member position of Gene Davis, Cleo Messner's term will expire on 4-30-08. Uh, this indicates that I'd also like to request the removal of Alderman Montemayor from the Strategic Fiscal Planning Commission Committee so as to abide by resolution number 19-0405, which deleted the chairman of the Committee of the Whole as a member, signed by the mayor. And that will lie over. Next, we move on to public forum. City Clerk Richards. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. First on the list is Audrey Auden. And Audrey, could you give me your home address, please? And you will have five minutes. Thank you. Your Honor and Council members, thank you for the opportunity to I'm here to address the issue of the Convention and Visitors Bureau. As an alderman, I served on the CVB for seven or eight years, and not once did a complaint come in regarding how Sheboygan was represented regarding publicity. In fact, we were amazed at how fast we were growing as a tourist destination. In 1993, according to state statistics, visitors spent $106.7 million, which grew to over $271.4 million in 2004. The first year and a half I ser serving on that committee, I was convinced that the city should keep all these dollars and administrate it ourselves. But believe me, it wasn't long and I knew that it would not be a wise move. I began to see how much work, time, and commitment was involved. This was done by Denny Moyer, Mr. Sheboygan, the committee members, and a host of volunteers who lived and worked in or around Sheboygan. For the city to take over the marketing of this business and to get outside consultants who would know nothing about Sheboygan would be a huge mistake. Tourism is not just fun and games. It's a big business. The Chambers Convention and Visitors Bureau has been in the business for many years. If there are things you do not like, the professional thing to do would be to speak with the committee, not dump them and start from ground zero. We need each other. We need to advertise the hiking and bicycle trails with Sheboygan as the hub, the destination for sleeping and eating. We need to advertise Elkhart Lakes Road America again with Sheboygan as a place to stay. We need to market the golf courses, Whistling Straits, Black Wolf Run, the Bull, along with many more, as being part of Sheboygan's suburbs so visitors will want to stay here and then go out from all, to all these exciting places. Don't you see? We need each other. It's a business. The chamber is made up of businesses from all over the county, and we need those connections. 
that Sheboygan should be showcased more heavily needs to be addressed. But let's not throw away all our past relationships. It takes people with a real passion for Sheboygan, those who know there is absolutely no better place to live, and, is, and are able to, be, to go out and promote our great community. Please, I'm begging, begging you, for the betterment of Sheboygan, let's work with the chamber on these issues. When you were elected as an alderman, it was to represent your constituents to make Sheboygan the best place to live and work. That also means working together with the county. That's called shared services, the words we have heard so often in the last year. Please, let's get behind the chamber and the Convention and Visitors Bureau, and let's work together. Now I'm going to shift, shift gears a bit. Building a new police station has become a major problem. We desperately need a new station. No questions asked about that. Where to build it? The city should not be buying prime land when we have city-owned land available. First of all, we do have City Hall to add on to, but that would not be my first choice. A better place would be the old recycling land across from the Municipal Service Building where even the gas pumps are available. It could be a beautiful area along the riverfront. It's an area that all of Sheboygan knows where it's located. It is centrally located, not even a minute from Erie Avenue, from Taylor Drive or South 14th Street. And Awanda State, we own part of that. To buy the rest of that probably would cost a lot less than when the one we're thinking of on highway, South Highway. Please, let's not spend more dollars on land. Let's use the dollars we save by not buying that land and put it into the best police station we can afford. Please take another look at that property. Let's get started now. Thank you again for your consideration. Oops. Thank you. <clears throat> Next on the list is Val Schultz. Val, can I have your home address, please? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to have to rush through this a little bit in order to complete it in five minutes. My name is Val Schultz. I live at 1747 Greenfield Avenue. I was allowed to be present at a Public Protection and Safety Committee meeting for comment when my communication concerning the new Southside Fire Station was on their agenda. The Finance Committee did not afford me that same courtesy. However, they did have a presentation from a contingent of the Fire Department. You all had a copy of my letter, so I will not rehash that now unless someone has a question. I would like to give a little more explanation for my concerns. I had intended to drop this matter after bringing it to the attention of the council, but at the public protection and safety meeting, the fire chief made a comment that completely flabbergasted me. I will get to that comment later. My concern is the effect on the budget and tax levy. It is not an issue with the fire department. It is strictly a fiscal issue. The city's total yearly debt service currently is approximately $8 million and consumes a little over 8% of your budget, and it is growing. With an additional proposed borrowing of up to $17 million for the new police station, the debt service for that will consume even more of your budget. The 18th Street Bridge was built to pro provide quicker response time to the far south side for emergency vehicles. This area is zoned rural residential. About one-third of the area within a one-mile radius of the proposed new south 18th Street fire station is in the town of Wilson. 18th Street, this is the same street the other Southside Fire Station is on, only two miles to the north. When additional development occurs, more farms are annexed, and we find a way to staff and maintain an additional station without cutting other departments, then you could consider this project. At the last council meeting, you had a fireman here tell you they are short-handed, and yet the chief says he can build and staff another fire station without hiring another fireman. The fire department provides a necessary and professional service, but what level of fire protection can we afford? Every other surrounding community has a volunteer fire department with what appears to be adequate fire protection because they are all experiencing development and growth, and 25% of our city of Sheboygan firefighters live in these areas with volunteer fire departments. Alderman Graff has been quoted referencing the school liaison officers that the council has to prioritize spending and that there may not be funding for liaison officers. I think priorities are confused when you would consider eliminating liaison officers but borrow and spend $72,000 for architectural design and $720,000 to build a new fire station. 
This does not include operating and staffing. I don't fault the fire chief for advocating this fire station, but it is your job to prioritize these requests. What is nice, what we really need, and what can we afford? Response times for the area of Rolling Meadows Drive on the far north side have got to be greater than the south side. Will the station for that area be the next request, and what do you do then? I received so many comments from people living on the south side questioning the need for another fire station, I felt compelled to write the letter that I submitted to you. I ask that you seriously consider all factors in your decision to make this major investment to build or not build this new fire station. There is not a major groundswell of support from the public for this project. Now for the comment the chief made. A comment that cannot be ignored and yet no member of the committee questioned it. I found it extremely troubling and you all should also. He said, most of the stormwater capital borrowing has been removed from the capital improvements program, freeing up borrowing capacity for projects like this. I will repeat, most of the stormwater capital borrowing has been removed from the capital improvements program, freeing up borrowing capacity for projects like this. Folks, that comment alone should cause every one of you to reconsider your support for this new fire station. When I was on the council, I supported the stormwater fee program with the understanding it would reduce the city's borrowing and along with that, the debt service that is consuming a good portion of your budget. Others opposed the stormwater fee, saying it was just another tax and borrowing would continue at a high level. It appears they may be right. Property taxes will continue to increase along with the creation of user fees and yes, you will be considering user fees. Folks, the idea of stormwater fee, as I understood it, was not to free up borrowing capacity for other projects. Mayor, you ran for office pledging to remove the stormwater user fee or tax. I do not know where you are with that pledge. I would hate to see it discontinued, but on the other hand, if this fee or tax and others are going to free up borrowing capacity for more projects, then maybe it should be discontinued. I made it. Oh. Thank you. Very good timing. I was just going to call you. <laughs> Okay, next on the list is Dimple Adams. Dimple, can I have your home address, please? Certainly, 1424 Virginia Avenue. And you will have five minutes. Thank you. Um, thank you, Council. Uh, thank you, Mayor uh, and Susan, um, Miss Richards, for allowing me to come and speak to you again tonight. Uh, before you, you have a letter that I have written, so uh, I just want to touch base with a couple of more issues um, that are not in that letter. but. Uh, I am here to speak about the police station, but I want to briefly say something about that I would like to see the um, continuation of the contract with the Chamber of Commerce uh, for another year. Um, and that's all I'm going to say about that, but um, because I want to re reserve my time for why I'm here. Um, the last two or three weeks, uh, and especially this past week, I have seen letters to the editor where they are calling council members and people that don't agree with them idiots, bozos. Um, you know, I don't, I don't get that. I don't, I don't get that kind of, of speaking. I, I think that uh, it's okay to disagree respectfully with each other and, and it's not going to be possible for everyone to agree with everyone all the time. And I think that certain respect needs to be kept. Uh, and so that, that bothers me a great deal. Uh, I also have had some letters uh, quoting some things that I've said. And uh, I don't mind being quoted as long as that I'm quoted correctly. So I would like for people to really take a little more time to research their facts. OK. <laughs> First of all, we have to purchase a site for the police station because we don't have a site that's not paid for. Uh, we took that option off the table May 9th. There's no sense in going back and rehashing his history. That happened, it's done. 
if we had kept that site, the police station would be under construction as we speak and probably would be finished up in the year 2006, in early 2006. Well, because we took away that option, now we're faced with choosing another site. And we have argued it and we have hassled it until I, it's just unbelievable to me. But let's just talk about the two sites that we hear about the most, which are 23rd Street and Vandervart. 23rd Street, it's my understanding that we would be paying $300,000 plus giving a parking lot, which cost us $484,000 to build. And if my understanding is correct, if we were to rebuild it, would cost us a million. Plus build a salt shed for them. So if you add all that up, that comes to about a total of one and a half million dollars. That's my figures. And I really try not to do fuzzy math. Now the Vandervart site is 15 acres and that's a four and a half acre site. The Vandervart site is 15 acres and it's gonna cost about one and a half million dollars. Now what else do we know about Vandervart? They stood here in front of this council two weeks ago and said that they are going to move and they are going to sell their property. In fact, they have already purchased property outside of the city limits, but they are interested in building in their industrial park at that 14 acre site. So they're willing to, to talk with us about that and possibly purchase that site, which would keep them on the tax rolls for us, which I think would be a win-win situation. And they would be willing to pay somewhere in the neighborhood of 300 20000 to 350000 at the $25,000 per acre. Okay, so then we would be getting 15 acres. We'd still have our parking lot downtown. Plus, we'd have plenty of room to build a police station and then maybe utilize some of the other acreage to sell off at what my understanding is right now, a valuation of about $100,000 per acre. So I figure that site... Maybe it's down the road going to cost us $800,000. We're still going to have Vandervart in town to pay taxes. And if the county doesn't want 23rd Street, why don't they just sell it and put it on the tax rolls for the county and for the city? Why go through all of this? I, I just don't get it. So that's my reasoning on that. I'm sorry, Excuse me. Um, that? That's it. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next on the list is Dwayne Desjardins. Is Dwayne here, please? Okay, then we go on. Uh, next on the list is Gina Steinhardt. Gina, can I have your home address, please? Sure. Uh, my address is 1311 Maryland Avenue. Okay, and you'll have five minutes. Okay. Thanks for the opportunity to speak here today. I'm just an average, ordinary resident of Sheboygan with no political ambitions. I don't enjoy speaking in public, and I don't enjoy being quoted in the paper. I just want to save money and survive like most of us around here. The theme for this current administration seems to be that to bring the public closer than ever before, to the decisions being made regarding our city. In light of that, the proposed Sheridan Park site for the new police station was preserved and a police station will not be built there. However, now the ears of this administration seem to be turned away from the public. People have spoken up at numerous meetings and public input sessions regarding the um, preference for the Vandervaart site, but certain officials and the Sheboygan Press seem to feel that the North 23rd Street site must be chosen when many people are against it. Even the police prefer the Vandervaart site over any others considered. If this is truly an administration who is listening to the people, why haven't we heard you speak in favor of this site? In fact, we've read in the press how Mr. Graf said this site will probably be eliminated even before Vandervaart had their chance to speak to the council. 
Keep in mind that the general public is now aware via the, the press that the Zimmerman's report, report's final decision on where to build the police station is not necessarily correct. It's been made clear that the Vandervaard site is the most cost efficient of all the choices remaining. Knowing this, I cannot see how the Common Council could possibly pick that site. Not only has it been shown by the police, the general public, and by those neighbors that it is not the best location, it is also the most expensive because of the items not listed in the Zimmerman report whatsoever. People have been submitting their concerns to the Council only to have them referred to the committee, then filed, which has been shown to be basically thrown out, never to be discussed again. In fact, two weeks ago, I sent a letter to all of you pointing out the errors in the Zimmerman report and asking for answers to why these large items were left out. I haven't had any questions answered and have been told that this letter will probably be referred to committee, which will probably be too late to get any answers since the decisions will be made um, based on this faulty report. At the input session on July 20th, our mayor said that the police department was involved a lot, also that the department heads work for the city but don't get elected. Their involvement is critical, crucial, and key, but there comes a point when their involvement has to stop and the decision-making responsibility lies on the council and the mayor. These comments were made after I asked why the police department's choice of location isn't being considered. Even Chief Kirk said he had no direct contact with the people who created the Zimmerman report. Why even have these public input sessions if you aren't really going to listen to, the, to any of us and answer any of our questions or concerns? Council members have also submitted questions, which are document 10-7 and 10-12 on today's agenda, that were referred to the Public Safety and Protection Committee last week. Um, they were about the police station site, especially the North 23rd Street site, and the extra costs involved. I attended this meeting and saw that none of these questions were answered. This also was just filed. I don't understand how you can make an educated decision on, this, on the best site when so many questions go unanswered and so many facts are ignored. The public is watching this council and its actions regarding the police station. Some have even said that it will never be built based on the recent inaction. This situation has gone on long enough. Please listen to the people and pay attention to their concerns about these costly delays. Many of us cannot afford to have our taxes go up drastically just to please the special interests of a few. It seems to us as if losing doesn't mean anything, that if you keep bringing it up, you will eventually win. Just look at the example of the park and now the Tourism Commission. These decisions were made many times, but then were challenged over and over until they were eventually overturned. The need for the police station in the Sheridan neighborhood was proven again yesterday by the fact that a seven-year-old girl was followed and then flashed when riding her bike near the Sheridan Elementary School. What more needs to happen before you see the need for increased police presence there? We need to stop being penny-wise and dollar-foolish by stalling the eventuality of building the new police station. We've already lost over $5 million since March of this year due to the bickering and fighting over the location. Common sense should prevail, I recently said at a public input meeting. Please cut back on your exorbitant expenditures and get the job done without any further delays and cost increases. We are all depending upon you to do the right thing. Please prove that you can really do it. Thank you. Thank you, Jan. Next item on the agenda is the mayor's report. I wanted to give you a, an update on the mayor's evaluation. I spoke to you about the mayor's evaluation that was being done by department heads. I find it a very, very useful managerial tool to have department heads uh, communicate with me in a manner, in, in the form of an evaluation. I asked each department head to be very candid with me. And that's what I got. They were very candid with me, and I was very appreciative of that. Uh, the evaluation dealt with things like uh, what are some of my strengths, what are some of my weaknesses, what are some of the biggest challenges that we face, uh, what are their expectations of me, what are their expectations of me with respect to other departments, and so forth. It was an evaluation intended to help me be a better, a better mayor for the city 
but also a better manager for our department heads. So overall, the evaluation was, uh, was quite successful. The next item I wanted to speak to you about is the citizens' uh, budget process that uh, is presently going on. We have done six scheduled meetings, one on the side that I did at the uh, senior center. We've, co we've had about 174 people that have attended. Some have been repeats, as some people have referred to them, but for the most part, a lot of people have been new to each district that, that we've had them. We have had surveys returned uh, to us that we've put out uh, so people can take with them at, at the sites, and we've had people return them. We have about five more weeks of meetings to go and a total of 10 more scheduled listening sessions with respect to the 16 but I will be doing a lot more. I am going around talking to social uh, service organizations and so forth. And just about anybody is willing to sit there and let uh, Mayor Perez talk and, and listen. Be it one person, be it 10, be it 100, be it 200. But I'm taking the message out to the, to the community. A question that was raised earlier by an alderman, if you're unable to attend a listening session in your district, that's okay. You can attend any session, all the sessions, or no session. You're welcome at any one of them. You're welcome to send friends. You're welcome to, to send anybody. But by all means, if you're able to attend, it would be, uh, it would be great for, for your constituents and yourselves. The other topic that I want to touch on uh, briefly today, and it's a topic that I, want to, that I want to touch on. I better leave this on yet. It's some of the budget challenges that we're going to be having. I want to touch on these challenges so that you can start getting an idea of what we're up against with respect to revenue and expenditures, building projects. We've heard a lot about people don't want to take taxes anymore. They don't want to get taxed anymore. They don't want to, they don't want to be assessed or, or, or feed anymore. So I want to talk to you about where we stand right now with respect to our, our budgetary process, what some of the projections that we can reasonably make. Uh, we're also looking at 07 already. My expectations are, in, in my discussion with uh, Mr. Gebhardt, that 07 is going to be worse than 06. I know that I thank Mr. Gebhardt for his patience with me. I talk to him about budgets more than twice, three times a week every, from, since I got in. But it's important that we work on this budget because that's, what's, that's what drives us. The budget is what drives us. The budget is what makes you accountable, holds you accountable to the public itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have six charts. I'll, I'll go through them very quickly. This is, not a, this is not a time to be asking a lot of questions. I would like for you to ask me questions. Please jot them down. We do have a full agenda to go, but I wanted to take this opportunity to talk to you a little bit so that you can start preparing yourself and think in budget mode because we have a, this is a time where a lot of people start lobbying for a certain money and we need to be aware of where that money is or where that money isn't. So I'd, I'd like to share those charts with you and talk. Susan, would you help me here, please? And once again, we're going to do it in the form of charts here. Now, these two little guys, little charts here, are pretty important to us. First of all, they tell us where our funds come from, and then they tell us where we actually spend it. And that pretty much sums our budget here. But if you look at, at our, our revenues, where we're getting our revenues from, 47% of our revenues come from state revenue sharing. 47%. Now, when we think in terms of revenue, it's money coming in so that we can provide the basic services to the community. For the last two years, state revenue sharing has leveled. That means we're not getting any more, but we're not getting any less. For the next two years, guess what? They're level two, so we're not getting any more. So we can pretty much anticipate and expect that amount to remain pretty steady. Our tax levy is 41%. Now, the tax levy comes out of your pocket. That's where we go to the, to the public and get the money from. So if you look at where our major sources of revenues come, 80, 88% comes from tax levy and state revenue. Now, the legislature has imposed a, a limit on our levy. 
they control that, and they control that. 88% of our revenue is controlled by the state. That leaves us with not too many options when we want to go out there and get more money. If, we're, if the council is going to be thinking, and it may have to, not on my recommendation, but the council may have to ask for more of the tax levy, for more tax levy, the only way to do it is to have a referendum. The rest of the, of the money comes from little bits and pieces here, license and permits, fines and forfeitures, and so forth. Not a lot. Here's our main pocket right here. And as I said, that's controlled by the state. If we look at the other one here, once we get the money here, and folks, that's all we got. That's all we're going to get. We're not getting any more. People have told us we don't want to get taxed anymore. State's telling us you're not getting any more for the next two years. That's what we've got to spend. That's what we got in the, in the pot. Now the next question is, well, that's what the money we got. How are we going to divide it? How are we going to spend it? This is what we've been doing. This is what we've been, what we've been spending our money on. If you notice, half of it goes to public protection and safety, police and fire. 32% uh, goes to police, 20% goes to fire. Almost half of that goes, goes to there. Public works gets about 21%. Uh, Parks and Senior Center gets about 9, and then Administrative gets about 17. Now, it's important to note here, because the question has been raised, Administrative is the general government fund, more or less. So what that means, included in that, is not just salaries for administrators, but also the cost for the City Hall, the building across the street, the, uh, the armory, the shanties, things of that nature. All that is considered general government cost, so it's, it's also we refer to it as Administrative. But when you see administrative, it tends to lead you in a direction that's it's management. That's not all it is. There's a lot more involved. But again, this is all the money we've got. That's what, you, what you're going to be working with. This is how we've spent it bef before in 05. The question is, is that the way you want to continue to spend it? And this is why it's important for me to go to the public and ask them the same question. They're the ones that vote as in office. And it's important for me to know from the people what is it that you're happy with? What is it you're not happy with? How do you want us to spend this money in this manner or not? Is this the way you want us to continue it? So if police and, and fire protection are very important to you, let's keep doing it or add more. If public works is more important, and again, we're going to have a debate here amongst all the departments. This is more important. This is more important than everyone, and this is more important. There's no end to that debate. Everyone, and they, and they should, consider the department to be the most important one. So, again, to recap, this is the money we get. It's all we're going to get. This is how we've been spending it. Is that the way you want to continue to spend it? Now, these charts are available in my office for you to review, and you can also, if you attend the listening sessions, they'll be there, and you'll be able to ask questions also there and provide input. We'll go to the next two charts. So if we look at the money we get, how we spent it, and you look at uh, original budgets for major departments, you can see a trend of how the money has been spent. Okay? Now, there was a comment raised, a question raised before. These are original budget. That means that's what we budgeted. Now, the question is, is that what we actually spent? The answer is yes, and in some instances, maybe a little more. But if you look at police here, from uh, 1996, there's been a steady increase all the way up. And that's fine. If that's the way the council wants to spend the money we collect, the money we're limited to, that's fine. If you look at public work, well, let's look at fire. Fire has gone up a little up, and that's fine, too. We do need public protection and safety. We need fire protection, police protection. But keep in mind that the more money you put in one major department, another one's going to take the hit because you've only got so much money to go around. So if you see public works, wow, come down. Somebody's going to take the hit. Library and, and parks have remained pretty steady for the most part. But the important thing to note here is this is the way we've been spending our, our money. So our police protection has gone up, hasn't gone down. Fire also hasn't gone down. Public works went down. Is this the way we want to continue spending the money that we have? Because all we have now is probably what all we're going to get, and it's going to get a little worse. If you look at uh, state revenue sharing, which is 47% uh, of our budget, what we get, you can see someone made a comment during our listening session, it looks like a big dipper. And I guess it is dipping. But you can see where it just went all out of whack. 
And then here, about 204 just took a main drop. And 04 and 05, it leveled off. We're not getting any more from the state, folks. We're not getting any less, but that's all we're getting. And for the next two years, it's frozen too. So when we budget our money, we know that's all we're going to get, so we have to work. So the question is, what is it we want to spend our money on? Or what other sources of revenue do we have? Now keep in mind, as we look at, at, at the, the major departments, we have five things that are happening right now that are, are going to cost us a lot of money. We have, a, we have a new police station that needs to be built. It's going to cost, and it's going to add to our debt service that's going to come up off operations. We have a new fire station that's, we're, that's proposed to be built. We have arbitration awards that are pending. We have a municipal court that's pending. And we have operations costs that are going to take a hit on our budget for police and fire when we have to go maintain and staff those, the, those uh, fire station, the fire station, the police station. So again, the point is, we can do all those five great things, and I think they're great. Question is, do we have the money to do it? And if we don't, do we have a plus source to get it from? People have told us, don't tax us anymore. State's telling us, we're not giving you anymore. So the next question is, well, if the state won't give us any more, people don't want to get taxed anymore, what do you say we borrow some? That's the next chart. We can't borrow anymore. We are allowed to borrow 5% of our equalized value. The council has imposed, self-imposed a limit of 3%, which is about $70 million. That may change because our equalized value may change this year, but it's not going to change a tremendous a lot, a tremendously uh, uh, up. If we look at our, our debt, it's gone consistently up all the way up to almost maxed out. Now, any credit card analyst that deals with credit cards on personal debt will tell you the minute you had 50% and go over, guess what? You're in trouble. Folks, I think we're in trouble. We don't have any more money coming in from the state. Taxpayers don't want to give us any more money. We can't borrow. So what's the next question? Somebody said, ah, we got reserves and unreserved funds. Can't use that either. It's your option. You can do that. But if you do that, we're going to destroy our bond rating. The unreserved funds are like having a, a savings account because the money that we get from the state doesn't come in one lump sum. It comes in intervals. So if we spend that money and we're out of that money in our savings account, what's going to happen, we're going to have to borrow to keep the lights going, to keep the fans going, to pay our staff. And guess what happens when you borrow? You pay interest. If we don't have the money now, we won't have the money to pay interest either. We've got some serious problems. So we can't, we can't get any more from the state. Taxpayers don't want to be taxed anymore. We can't borrow anymore. We certainly should not hit our, our reserve, uh, unreserved funds. What's the solution? The solution is... How are you going to want to spend your money? You've got major departments that are going to be out there lobbying hard, asking you for money. We've got the money. We'll find it. I don't know where because the last time I checked, and I think it was this afternoon I asked Rich, we can't print our own money. We can't coin our own money. We have none. So keep in mind what is it that we want to spend our money on. This is going to be a big, heavy challenge for us. If you look at our general fund expenditures, expenditures you can see where the, the expenditures went up and the revenues there's a gap here. So what's happening, if our revenues aren't going up and they're sitting here idle, our expenditures go up automatically every year. We have steps in longevity, wages and salary, premium share, gasoline. Just between the police and fire, we have a little over $6 million worth of vehicles. They don't run on water. So we have to buy gas. We have to pay higher utilities. All these costs are automatic without any regard whatsoever to how we're going to pay for it. That's our job. How do we balance this budget? How do we close this gap? Because when your revenues are here and your expenditures are here and they keep going up, there's this huge gap in between. You're either going to have to bring expenditures down, or bring revenues up, and revenues can't go up as far as I can see unless somebody has some really ingenious way of doing that. And if you do, please call me or call Rich because we need some ideas here. But that's where we are, folks. We're at a point right now, and I'll tell you what, we don't have the money for 06 coming in from any sources. 07 is going to be worse. So what's going to happen? You give money to one department, you're right, somebody else is going to take the hit. 
You're going to have to pull money from some other department to give it to that department. So what is it that you want to do? That's burden, it lies on every alderman here when we put that budget together. And I say that, it's very important because we're going to have a lot of lobbying done. I feel it now, I hear it now. There's a lot of lobbying, we need this, we need that, we need that. Just ask, where do you think we're going to get the money? I don't have the answer, but we're going to struggle with it, and we're going to come up with something. But it may just turn out to be, we're going to have to cut services. And when you cut services, folks, you cut people. But if we keep going at the rate we're, we're going, I won't, and I'm a, in, in my own naive way, I say we're, mathematically we're going to fizzle out. We cannot continue to, the demand for our expenditures that far exceeds our revenues. And there's no chance of that gap closing yet unless we bring those expenditures down. And the only way to bring them down is cut services, cut here, cut there. And you're going to have one department or two or three say, we're more important, cut them. We're more important, cut them. That responsibility lies on your shoulder. So be thinking about that. And those are some of our budget challenges that we have. As I said, the charts are available in my office for anybody, including the public. And if you have any questions, feel free to write them down, share them with me, share them with Mr. Gebhardt, and we'll be glad to give you some answers. Okay? Thank you. And I forgot to mention the charts and the uh, surveys are also, questionnaires are also on our website. So we, the public, the aldermen, anybody can access, can access those uh, surveys. Next we move on to the consent agenda. Alderman Serda, you punch first. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I just wondered if you could just clarify that one pie chart. And it was the 2005 fund, um, fund appropriations because you're saying that this is available to the public. I had noticed that some of the numbers weren't actually reflective like of the staffing. And it's, I think, important to mention that those are projections budgeted, but not actual what we have in, in terms of staff. For instance, I think it said 113 police oh, officers. With that, right. OK, so the, the percentages okay. may okay. be a little bit off. Thank you. Paul McGraw. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, regarding the consent agenda, before I get into that, I'd like to pull forward dot RC's 964 and 1061. Um, uh, motion to pull 964 and I'm sorry, which one? And 1061. 1061. And with that, um, then I make a, a motion that RC 964 be accepted and adopted and RC. Um, 1061 also be accepted and adopted. And these both refer to the, um, the uh, room tax and the Chamber of Commerce. There's a motion to accept and adopt 964 and 1061. Is there a second? There's a second under discussion. Oh, under discussion, Your Honor. Um, thank you. Uh, regarding uh, 964, that's the committee report by finance uh, that we approved at the library. This one calls stating uh, uh, that we issued a statement to Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce stating their contract desire, uh, their contracts that they desired would um, like, they would like to see a new room tax agreement for 2006. Recommends that that report of officer be placed on file and that the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce be notified that the contract for the 2006 will not be renewed and we will bring the, the process in house. And then 1061 is the RC, um, also by finance, uh, regarding Alderman Surtur's establishing a tourism advisory committee for the city of Sheboygan. And the finance committee recommended that that resolution be pace, placed on file. Okay. <clears throat> Under further discussion, Alderman Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. Just for clarification for those at home, basically what we're approving here is we're saying that by approving 964 that we're going to let the city um, turn its tourism promotion and marketing in-house and we'll be denying the contract with the Chamber of Commerce and just severing that relationship. 
And 1061 finance, I did send that document to finance and they did, um, they did vote against it. But it, what it basically does, I think it finds a happy medium. Instead of one parameter is having a, a tourism commission, the other spectrum is taking it in-house. I've um, proposed having a tourism advisory committee um, and assured that this time there wouldn't be any miscommunication. I've also um, allotted the mayor to be on board, um, older persons, and um, nice representation from all of the entities in the Tourism and Promotion Commission. I think um, I would also, courtesy to the chamber and our relationship, I think it's best that I'd like to make a motion to open the floor to the chamber. Anyone who'd like to speak? Second. Uh, Alderman Sarda, you're opening the floor to... the chamber? Board how, members? How many people? As many as are here. As many as are here. Okay. Second. Second. There's a motion and a second. Okay. Under discussion, Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. In the sake of time, and this has been going on for quite some time. We've looked at tourism advisory boards and everything else. I would like to amend that motion to open the floor to two members of the chamber, two members of the CVB for not more than three minutes each. There's a motion and a second. Under discussion, amendment. Alderman McGraw. Well, I was going to make a similar motion, but I was going to open the floor to not only just the chamber, but any other interested parties that, that would like to speak but also to limit it to whatever the chair calls reasonable. But this motion is on the floor. We'll, we'll, we'll take that motion, the amendment to the motion on the floor. <clears throat> Please, you want to call the roll here? Um, the you want motion. A roll call or vote? <coughs> roll call. This would be to amend the motion to include just two members of the chamber and two CVB members. For two, yeah. for two minutes. Yes, two or three minutes. Which did you say? How much? Three minutes. Three minutes? Okay. Um, this would be to vote on Alderman Radke's amendment, and I would be to allow two and two for three minutes. Bauman? No. Deberg? No. Eberg? No. Serta? No. Davis? No. Groff? No. Kittleson? No. Manny? Yes. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? No. And Vanderweel? No. Six ayes, ten noes. The amendment fails. Amendment fails. Now we'll take a vote on the motion as originally stated to open the floor to anyone. Any? Just for the chamber. Right, any chamber. Paul McGraw, under discussion. Thank you, Your Honor. Then at this time, I'd like to make a motion that we open the floor to any interested person that want to speak regarding this particular issue, as long as it does not get repetitive. Okay, but we do have a motion to the floor. You're amending but the I'm motion. I'm going to ask for an amendment. Then. There's an amendment to open the floor. There's a second? Second. There's a second. Under further discussion? If not, all those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Take a roll call. This is Stay to with us. We'll take a roll call. This is to amend to any one party interested. Um, D. Berg. No. E. Berg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. No. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Thank you. Manny. Aye. Meyer. No. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. No. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. And Bauman. Twelve to four. The amendment passes. Okay, we'll open the floor. Would you read Do you want them? Want me to time for three minutes? Yes, Is please. Is that the understanding? For a reasonable time will be three minutes. Who would like to address the Alderman Manny? Thank you, Honor. I would first like to make a motion to <laughs> invite people to speak pro and con for the contract being renewed in some modified form, those against any relationship, taking it in-house, to try to balance the presentations. That's I my think notion. that's what we're going to hear. I don't know that we need a motion for that. I think we're going to hear that. All right. Okay. And if we don't, then we'll come back. 
Could we have, when you come up to the mic, just give me your name, please, okay. so that I can get record of that? Sure, you bet. Dave Gass, 1921 Arrowhead Court, Sheboygan. I can ease your mind a little bit that uh, we're only going to have one person speak from the chamber, CVB, so um, maybe you'll give me a little more than three minutes. Um, I just want to say thank you for the opportunity to address you. I know that all of you have received the correspondence from myself. Um, I, um, along with Greg Wegeman and Richard Rosgen, are on the board of the chamber, and we were asked to look into this issue after the Finance Committee vote about three weeks ago. And we've done that, and we met with the mayor and Susan Hart and Paulette, and I want to thank them for meeting. We met on two, two occasions, had, some, had a lengthy meeting, and we appreciated the dialogue very much. And we appeared at the Finance Committee last week and presented some, some thoughts. When, we, when the three of us got together and met, our goal was primarily to look at um, how did we get to this point and how could we preserve the partnership that is the chamber and the city. Our, our focus wasn't to say, okay, who did what wrong, who missed this, who missed that. Our point was how can we preserve the relationship because it is our belief that the city benefits by preserving this, this relationship, this partnership between the city and the chamber CVB. So we looked at what had happened, we looked at, um, had our discussions, and came up with the conclusion that indeed the oversight committee that had been formed um, was not doing the job that it had been designed to do, which was to make sure that there was good communication back and forth. And I'm not criticizing anybody in saying that. I'm just saying that it was clear that it just wasn't accomplishing the purpose that it was intended. And we clearly heard from um, uh, the mayor's office and Paulette and others that the city was looking for a different focus in some of the marketing and tourism. Um, the chamber and the CVB has always had the city of Sheboygan first and foremost on its minds in promotion. I want to put your minds at ease that we have not um, uh, marketed the county to the exclusion of, of the city, even though the city is in the county, obviously. Um, we have had Sheboygan first and foremost, and we want to continue to do that. There were, obviously, there are some differences on how you carry that out. We came to the conclusion that we were willing to propose some major changes, what we view as major changes to the relationship in order to uh, preserve it and show that we can continue to work together. We have a 20, 30, I'm not sure how long, relationship. And it strikes me and it struck us that this is a time when you don't want to destroy private-public partnerships, but you want to maintain those private-public partnerships. So our proposal that you all have is that we extend the contract for one year, that we create an oversight committee, which would either be the tourism committee or the commission. Um, we don't have strong feelings. We're ready, willing and ready to really go whichever way the council deems appropriate. I, we have some ideas for specific changes in the tourism um, efforts, and we would, would make changes in that regard. We believe that by doing this, the city will benefit, and that's really our goal. I'm a city resident, and I believe that we need to get the most out of our relationships. But I think, as in, my, in our last letter, we identified, if I can very quickly identify the benefits, by doing that, we preserve this partnership, which I think is a, a valuable partnership to continue. Attorney Gass, we would need, it's three minutes, so if you wanted to. It's my call. Please continue. Okay, thank you. We would also continue during this one-year period, we would continue to explore the visitor center. I know that that has become maybe a source of conflict, but we really believe that that visitor center can be something that's very good for the city of Sheboygan. We intentionally looked for places in the city because we wanted it to be uh, centered in the city. And we would look to be able to try to build that uh, visitor center. If we no longer are involved in tourism with the city, it's going to be much more difficult for us to do that. But we would continue to look at ways that we could build that visitor center. Um, we would also, I think that preserving the partnership builds on the inherent advantages that are with the CVB. I mean, when people want to come to Sheboygan, Sheboygan County, they call up the chamber. You know, whether we ask them to or not, they just call up the chamber. That, that there's that inherent um, belief that the chamber knows where everything is. In many cases, we do. And by keeping that partnership, we build on that inherent advantage that's already present. You don't have to recreate that advantage. And finally, by keeping our partnership, um, we can continue to work at getting the participation of other municipalities. I would openly admit to you that we, are not, we have not been as successful as we would like to be. We had hoped we could have gotten more participation from other municipalities. We did bring on the town of Sheboygan during the last uh, term of the contract. And we've been continuing to talk to others. And our thought was that by bringing the visitor center on board, that'll be another vehicle that we can use to attract other, other um, uh, municipalities to 
partner with us in, in tourism. I guess the final comment I'd like to make is, um, and you may disagree with me, but I don't think there's a downside to extending this contract for a year. Um, frankly, to transition in the remaining couple of months that's left is going to be a huge challenge. And if we can, if we can par extend the contract for a year, make these kinds of changes, and we're open to some other changes that you might have, we preserve this partnership, and I think it allows us to see whether some of these other benefits can come to fruition. If it doesn't happen in a year and you choose to bring it in-house after a year, I don't think the city has lost really anything uh, in the process because, again, we've agreed that you will have greater policy oversight during this next year. So I'm asking you, and the Chamber is asking you, is that you would allow us to make modifications to the current arrangement, extend the contract, and preserve this partnership that has been the city uh, and the Chamber for a number of years. I think if we do that, I think we're going to find that some really good things can come of it. Thank you, and we'd be happy to answer any questions that you uh, might have. Thank you, Mr. Gass. Is there anyone else who would like uh, to raise some additional points, different points? And could I have your name, please? Christina Kornetsky. Uh, say it again. Christina Kornetsky. How do you spell your last name, please? <laughs> K-O-R-N-E-T-Z-K-E. Okay. Um, I just wanted to make a point that um, last week um, all the lodging properties in the city of Sheboygan met and we came to a consensus and um, I do have a copy for everybody if they like a copy of this with the signatures of the properties that are in agreement to this. And this is pretty much of a very vague of how we feel as the Sheboygan Lodging Group. We, the following lodging properties of Sheboygan area, are concerned with the future promotion and tourism of Sheboygan. We hereby support the success in tourism that the Chamber and CVB have brought to the Sheboygan area, resulting in a continuous increase in occupancy in our hotels. We are uneasy with the City of Sheboygan taking on this enormous responsibility without allowing us to see a marketing plan, budget, and goals that will be set to ensure that tourism will continue to grow and occupancy in our properties will also continue to increase. It would seem not, that only, not only at the lodging group, but the members of the Common Council would expect to see a marketing plan, budget, and goals before considering to taking this in-house. As several lodging people attended the Finance Committee meeting, we understand that there were recent allegations from the city that the Chamber did not fulfill their agreement with their contract. We feel that the Chamber and the CVB have tried to come to a resolution and there has not been enough time or effort from the city to try to come to an agreement. As lodging owners and managers, it is our responsibility to ensure that the area is promoted to its fullest potential and to ensure that the economic impact that our properties have on this area are fully understood. Therefore, we are asking that the city reevaluate their intentions and consider contracting with the Chamber and CVB or provide us with a marketing plan, budget, and goals that the city is intending to use to successfully market Sheboygan and in to ensure that the occupancy in our lodging properties will continue to grow. Thank, Thank you. you. Alderman Sagali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, could we please have a list of the, ma'am, could we please have a list of the people who signed that petition, please? Thank you. Is there someone else who would like to address the council? Different point? Sir, please step up. Thank you, Your Honor. Carter Paulus. Thank you. 414 Erie Avenue. Thank you. And I don't think I'm going to need three minutes. The letter that was uh, proposed in the press to have the uh, chamber uh, continue to um, shortchange the city of Sheboygan for another year. Uh, one of the signers, I believe, was Attorney Gass. Uh, one of the other signers actually does, is with the Plymouth Chamber of Commerce. I don't know how it got into the Sheboygan press. Are these gentlemen the decision makers of the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce aldermen? Do they have the power and the majority and the executive um, 
strength to perform what they think they're going to do or want to do, I find the whole concept very weak. But the bottom line is that the Common Council, not the Common Council, I beg your pardon, the Chamber, shortchanged the city of Sheboygan to the tune of over $182,000. What are you going to do about that? Where is the city of Sheboygan's money? And do you want to continue this form of action, Alderman? Is it okay to have them take our money and spend it for something other than what the contract calls for? And they don't even file their uh, contractual obligation in financial reports? They haven't followed the spirit or the letter of the contract. And you want to keep on having them do it? We had an excellent presentation in the committee from Paulette Enders of what we can do. And we had an excellent presentation from Susan Hart of what the chamber did not do. Therefore, I would hope that we put an end to our money going out the window to areas other than Sheboygan. And by the way, this doesn't affect your budget. The money comes from room tax. Nothing in the budget. There's no fear of uh, overextended or created bureaucracy that's going to overdo everything. We don't have that fear. This is an entirely separate thing. And our city and our De Redevelopment Corporation is, stands ready and able to perform. And you have no idea how much intelligence is out there in the city ready to contribute for the city. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else that would like to address the council on different points? Yes, sir. <coughs> And can I have your name, sir? My name is Milton Storm, and I reside at 1736 Marvin Court. Thank you. I had no intention of speaking tonight, and uh, usually if I have to speak for two minutes, I need two hours of preparation. If I've got to speak like the last gentleman, I can speak forever. I'm trying to at least keep down my anger, and I seem that a lot of people seem to have a doom and gloom against the Chamber of Commerce. I've known Denny Moyer since 1971. I don't want to reveal his age. But then, but then he was a sports writer for the Sheboygan Press. And he interviewed me when I hit the 795 series, the highest in the city of Sheboygan, along with a 300 game. I've known him when he's been with the baseball. I've known him now when he's been with the Chamber of Commerce. And you couldn't find a better Sheboygan residence that we have in Denny Moyer. And now we're going to throw that aside. I don't like for people to come up here and make character assassinations and give figures and things like that, which would probably they don't have any numbers. Anybody can pull a group of figures out of a hat. And I don't like to see people get up here and give us nothing but doom and gloom. That uh, re always reminds me of the Democratic uh, politicians and some of the moderate Republicans. So that's all I've got to say. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> I think. <laughs> Is there anyone else that would like to address the council on different points? Okay, we will move on and take Alderman Serta. One final comment, thank you, Your Honor. You know, I once had the privilege of working under a tremendous um, individual by the name of Tim Renzelman. He was our manager, and he had set a policy in place that always said, if you ever have an issue with your coworkers, have the courtesy to go to them first and try to resolve it. If it can't be done, then take it to management. And I think that same principle could have been applied here. This relationship with the chamber was a two-way street. 
If at any time we had shared these concerns with them or wanted to take a new direction with the city, I am confident because I've seen it. Anytime I've had a question with the chamber about the policies, the contractual agreement, they were always there to give me an answer. And as you've heard it, you've read it in a letter, they've communicated to the city, they are willing to work with us, make those changes. Um, when we do take this vote, I do ask that we take them separately and that there's a clarification on what that vote will actually mean. Thank you. Okay. Motion is to accept and adopt 964 and 1061. Alderman Stephan. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, I do want to thank Attorney Gass. I, I think the Chamber has, has stepped forward in this and, you know, they've admitted their, their failures. The council has admitted our failures. I think I remain. I don't know how the vote's going to turn out, but I do remain convinced that whichever way it goes, I think tourism is going to be promoted better next time. There'll be more accountability. The chambers signed on to the advisory idea. I think the majority of the council, whichever side they decide to choose, has also, you know, signed on with the idea that whoever was in charge, it wasn't getting done on our side to look over it. And I, and I think that if nothing else comes out of this, that's a plus. I just wanted to take a minute. There were a couple of misconceptions that were out there, and you know I don't want to hassle over them. I just want to point them out that you know, one I kept hearing from people was that Paulette Enders can't do this. She's so busy. She's not going to do it. We're going to hire a tourism professional. They have Denny Moyer. That was another consistent. Per Everybody you talked to, whether they were for this chamber, against it, they all said Denny was the greatest thing in the world. You know he did a wonderful job. And obviously we you know hire him if we could. We'd hire somebody like him. We're going to have a professional doing in charge of it. So we're not going to be sticking Paulette with another 18 job duties. Okay, so that's one thing we want to clear up. The other thing, and, and this could be a record, I think it might be the first time I ever agreed with Carter. Absolutely, the money's coming in. You know, this isn't adding another layer of bureaucracy that we can't afford and it shouldn't affect the mayor's, you know, pie charts because, yep, we're putting people in office, but here's the money. Similarly, you know, down the road we're looking at a uh, municipal court. Same thing, you know, if the money's there, it's give or take a little bit. So that argument shouldn't, shouldn't wash with anybody. I was a, a approached by the chamber, and I, I guess I'm glad to see that they're willing to, to work with us. You know, Paulette, in her presentation to the Finance Committee, she clearly had a marketing plan. She clearly had a budget. You know, I mean, you're not going to spend three weeks fine-tuning it for a presentation that might go nowhere, but I thought, you know, you looked at her presentation, she had a PowerPoint presentation, it was professional. I certainly knew what, what she was talking about. So I think, I agree with the chamber, you know, there's, a, there's ideas, Paulette mentioned it. They were willing to work with them on certain issues, even if we take it in-house. Maybe we'll give them a certain amount of money and say, here, we'll pay for this portion of the visitor's guide. There's options there and it's not like saying we're going to do it in-house and you guys are done and we're never going to talk to you again. We're still going to work with them. That's the intent if Paulette gets it. The other one, there's two more, and I'll try to be brief. Um, the contract negotiations, you know, <coughs> I understand, and, and that's the part that I struggle with is, did we notify them? Yeah, you kind of feel like, a, you know, the bad kid, you're punishing your kid right away, and you didn't tell them. But on the other hand, you know, I think that putting those things in the contract, why would we put that in the contract? That was notification that, yeah, it's kind of a big deal, we want to put it in there, make sure it gets done. None of those things that we talked about, or many of them that weren't followed through on, were in the contract 10, 15, 20 years ago. Those were added. Now, why were they added? I think they were at it because they weren't getting done and the city wanted to put an emphasis on making sure they got done. So I do, you know, I, I do think we did give them notification. Whether our response is irrational tonight, I don't know. That's up to anybody to guess. And my last misconception and probably the one that bothers me the most is that I hear people say the city has nothing to offer. We, you know, we shouldn't, we want to push ourselves. We've got to understand, I do understand tourism and I understand that certainly you're going to get people into the golf courses, into the racetracks, and we will get the overflow. I understand that. But I also think we have a lot to be promoting here. My son is entering UW-Milwaukee, and I went there last week for an orientation, and they give you the Milwaukee Visitor's Guide. First thing I noticed was it says the city of Milwaukee and the visitmilwaukee.org. Two pages of ads, no big deal. It's got a table of contents, a welcome from the uh, head of the Convention Visit Bureau. A welcome from three mayors, Tom Baird from Milwaukee, Terry Estes from Wauwatosa, and Jay Hens from Glendale. So obviously there's some buy-in there. But what really shocked me was the first article they have, The Great Lake. 
And I'll read you just the beginning of it. It says, Milwaukee's most recognized attraction is yours to enjoy. It needs no introduction, no added description, or proper name. In Milwaukee, the lake is a star on par with Cher, Madonna, or the Donald. The kind of presence that turns heads, draws fans, and makes people swoon. And I submit to you, these are tourism professionals telling you we've got that same lake in our backyard. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Stephan. So would you please call the roll? OK, just to, as per Alderman Serta's request, um, an explanation. The first document you'll be voting on is 9-64. It's an RC by finance. And finance recommends that the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce be notified that the contract for 2006 will not be renewed, and this will be brought in-house. So an I vote would be to bring this in-house. Is that pretty clear? OK. Eberg. No. Serta. No. Davis. Aye. Groff. Aye. Kittleson. No. Manny. No. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. No. Excuse me? No. Thank you. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. No. Bauman. No. Deberg. The vote is eight to eight, it's a tie. Chair votes aye. The next vote would be on document number 10-61. And that is an RC by finance, establishing a tourism advisory committee and filing that resolution. An I vote would be to file that resolution. Is everybody clear on that? Serta. No. Davis. Aye. Groff. Aye. Kittleson. No. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. No. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. No. Bauman. No. Deberg. No. Eberg. No. The vote is nine to seven. Motion carries. Consent agenda, Old McGraw. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, for items 10-1 through 10-33, I would move that all ROs be accepted and placed on file, all RCs be accepted and adopted, and we pass all the resolutions. There's motion, is there a second? Second. second. Under discussion, Alderman Susha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to move that uh, number 10-7 and 10-12 have a separate vote, combined separate vote to be referred. 10, I'm sorry, 10-7 and 10-12. 12? Yes, thank you. Alderman Stefan. Uh, yeah, just as a point of information, often we tell people, I heard it tonight, that when we file something, you know, it's throwing in the garbage. I, I don't want a separate vote, but I just wanted to point out on 10-3, there's a bunch of documents from the Board of Parks and Forestry, most of them talking about the dog parks, dog walks, and I just want to assure the people we're, we're just filing them as routine. I've been keeping up with the committee. They are still looking into it. It's not like they're throwing away those ideas, so I don't want them to get the wrong idea. It is still something that they're working through and developing a plan. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Alderman Eberg. Uh, Thank you, Your Honor. I would like to uh, also poll 10-3 and have a division of the question. Take note Can of we that. do all the first? Okay. We're going to, first of all, before we go any further here, we're, we're going to take a separate vote on 10-27, 10-7 and 10-12? 10-7 and 10-12. Okay. 10. Yes, hold on. You have to leave? Okay. You're excused. Thank you. Pardon me? She just wants to refer. You want to what? Refer it to the mayor's office. Both? 10-7 and 10-12, yes. OK. There's a motion to refer 10-7 and 10-12 to the mayor's office. Is there a second? Second. There's a second. Any discussion? Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. 
I don't have a problem sending it to the mayor's office. Uh, when we filed it in committee, it was an understanding that uh, that the department had had the information and that Alderman uh, Kittleson and Alderman Graf had the questions and, and had the uh, people that asked those questions. So it was under the understanding that they were going to communicate that. So we weren't just throwing it away. But I don't have a problem sending it to the mayor's office and the responses. Yeah. Thank you. Alderman Eberg, did you want to continue, sir? No? We got you off. Alderman Stefan, you're not on anymore? Okay. Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Your Honor. Are you then going to be answering these questions and then putting them out on the website or um, in the paper or something that, um, you know, that yes. people could see that they are being answered? They're written for the mayor's office. I, I take it that I'm being asked to respond to them, okay. and I'll submit those questions and answers back to the, probably the committee of the whole, where it should be. Okay. Okay? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm sorry, what? You want to pull 10 3 forward? We haven't taken a vote on that. Do we? Oh, all eyes, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all those in favor of the motion to refer 10 7 and 10 12 back to the mayor's office, please state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chair, uh, motion carries. Okay, now we're going to vote uh, division of the question. Which mm -hmm. one was it? Uh, Alderman Ebert. Yes, uh, thank you, Your Honor. I'd uh, like to pull from that resolution uh, number four. Uh, which is the uh, uh, resolution establishing a study of pet-friendly areas. I believe that was included by mistake. The uh, commission did not vote on that particular topic, uh, so that is still under consideration, if you would, by the Parks Commission. Also, as a matter of explanation, uh, the commission did uh, recommend that the council, to the, will be recommended to the council not to allow dogs in city parks. Uh, but they are, however, looking very actively at uh, having dog runs in non-park city property. And I bring that up uh, because the, any interested dog owner who would be willing to work to improve these areas, if you were to contact Paul Meyer, I think he's putting together a group of folk that will be looking at areas and trying to improve that. And Paul's number is 459-3440. Good. <laughs> That's a commercial. Commercial time. Thank you, Alderman Berg. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. If I heard right, I believe Alderman Berg said 10-4 when I believe he meant 10-3. Just for the... It, it, would, be, uh, it would be document 10-3, but number 4 on there. Oh, okay. And that's, I apologize. Tell, would you please explain the votes. We can take um, what we'd be doing is just referring, I'm assuming, back to the Board of Park and Forestry's number 4. And the rest of the document can be accepted and filed as is. I understand that. All those in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, we'll, we'll vote on the remaining consent agenda items from 10-1 to 10-33. There was a motion in the second. Take call roll. Yep. Let me get that. Okay. Davis. Aye. Graf is excused. Graf is excused. Okay. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Racky. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. <clears throat> Excuse me. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. And Serta? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Report of officers 1034, Alderman E. Berg. Just a motion to accept and file. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, move to accept and file. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> second. Second. Under discussion? A roll call? Just, uh, no. Oh, no. Not all those in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? Yeah. Oh. One abstention. Mm -hmm. Alderman Susha. Yep. Motion carries. 1035 to 1046 to be referred. Please note that 1041 will go to public protection and safety, not public works. Resolutions introduced. <clears throat> 1047. Alderman Bauman. I thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to move for suspension of the rules, please. There's a mo motion and a second to suspend. All those in favor? Please proceed. Your Honor, I'd also then like to make uh, an amendment to this particular uh, resolution. Another whereas, as far as that goes. Alderman Bauman, uh, 
how to put the document on the floor oh, first and then I apologize. Then make the motion. I would uh, move that the resolution be put upon its passage. There's a motion to put the resolution upon its passage. Is there a sec second? Okay. I want to do that. Okay. <laughs> now then, Your Honor, I wish to make an amendment to the motion. Another, uh, be it further resolved, that the city hereby accepts the Ecology Center at Elwood H. Environmental Park as a gift from such trust. That will be the final, be it further resolved. Is there a second to that amendment? A second. Any further discussion? Your Honor. Uh, yeah. Turn McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Just for clarification, uh, I suggested that be added to Alderman Bauman. Uh, that language is basically, it's in the heading uh, to accept the, the <laughs> gift from the uh, trust, but it's not in the resolves. So I think really, you know, in the heading doesn't have any legal standing or anything, so it should be in the text of the resolution. That's what Alderman Bauman's uh, amendment would do. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Roll call on the uh, amendment. Uh, Davis. Aye. Graff. I'm sorry. He's gone. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. D. Berg. Aye. E. Berg. Aye. And Serta. Aye. 15 ayes. Amendment passes. Now we'll take a vote on the motion as amended. Kittleson. Oh, I'm sorry, this is a motion as amended. The final motion. Yeah, is it okay? Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. D. Berg. Aye. E. Berg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion passes 1048. Alderman Groff is excused. Alderman Stephan. Uh, Your Honor, could I take 1049 and 1050 with it also? Please do, thank you. I would move that all the resolutions be put upon their passage. Second. There's a motion and a second to put resolutions 1048 and 1049 upon their passage under discussion. I would ask that we uh, open the floor to Carol Worth from RBC and Dane Rauscher to give us the abbreviated version of the bond sales that happened today. There's a motion to open up the floor to Carol. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Please. Good evening. I have prepared two handouts for you tonight that address uh, one of them, specifically 1048, and the other handout is for the 1049 and 1050 items. I'll begin with the, um, the handout for the 1048. It, it says on the front cover, sale results for the Sheboygan Water Utility, 4.9 million revenue bonds. On August 1st, the Common Council took action on resolutions that was setting a sale of these revenue bonds on today's date. And so today I'm here to report to you the results of those sales. And also I'll give you a little background on how we compared to our expectations when I was here the last time. Um, on page one is really a summary of everything that's taking place with regard to this financing. We're serving as your financial advisor, and in doing so, what we've done is um, prepared a document called an official statement. It's a very large document. You just received a copy of tonight. It looks like a phone book. Um, this is a prospectus on the city. It describes the bonds to the investors and also to the underwriters. It is used to distribute nationwide to solicit the bids that we received today. And the document was prepared for all three financings, and that's why you have three resolutions. There's gonna be three financings. And the document is also used and submitted to the rating agencies. And with the water utility, we uh, have a Moody's rating outstanding. So we had conversations with Moody's, and I am pleased to report that Moody's has reconfirmed our A1 credit rating for the water utility. The funds are being used for uh, what I have described there on page one. Uh, I've, I've got the dollar amounts next to the purposes. We have water utility projects, and that in includes 
Two new reservoir projects include some engineering expenses for a potential intake project. It is also some dollars are being used to refinance 1989 bonds that are outstanding at a 7.4% interest rate. We have the ability to call in those bonds and stop that interest as of October 15th of this year. We also fund a reserve account with revenue bonds because revenue bonds are not put on the tax levy. They are paid from the revenues of the water system. So you must have a reserve account that's equal to about one year's debt service on revenue bonds just to be able to market them and also to achieve the A1 rating. And we also have issuance expenses, so I have all of those items and players identified for you. Uh, the sale took place this morning at 10 o'clock. We received three bids, and I have what is attached to this handout identified as exhibits. And your resolution that you had in your packet today does not include those exhibits filled out. So when you adopt that resolution tonight along with these exhibits, that makes an entire document and that will then be accepting these results. So for the first exhibit, we refer to as exhibit B. It's the bid tabulation. If you want to take a look at that, that's on the next page, number two at the bottom. And you'll see we received three bids, the winning bidder being UBS Financial out of Chicago, and the true interest rate on this financing, it's a, approximately 20 years, is a 4.001%. That's a quarter of a percent better than what we were anticipating a couple weeks ago. And um, that equates to um, about $124,000 of less interest than what we were projecting. You can see there that we had a bid from um, Robert Beard at a 411 and Cruz and Associates, which is out of um, Arkansas, for a 411. The next exhibit is page three. It's called Exhibit C. It is the bid form. This is how the underwriters place their bids. And you will see on that bid form that there is uh, at the top the paragraph that starts with for all or none that they bid a premium. Those are dollars that they give you up front. And then they also bid their interest rate. So you can see how the interest rates are listed. At the bottom, in the right, on the far left-hand corner, it says not a part of this bid, is the calculation. So if you take those interest rates, subtract the premium, because that premium dollar is coming to you up front, that produces the calculation at the bottom of net interest cost and true interest rate. And so those are the numbers that are used on the bid tabulation. So that's how you compare them. Now, if we take those interest rates that are on this bid form and put them into the repayment schedule, that's the next exhibit, Exhibit D. And you can see there that we have the principal amounts at those interest rates produces the interest column. And then it produces the far right-hand column of annual D slash, that's debt service. Debt service means principal and interest added together. The bottom, if you take the rate column and go all the way to the bottom, you'll see the word average coupon. Coupon means interest rate. And on this page, the average coupon is 4.017 because it is not subtracting that premium that they bid on their bid form of 1,900 and some dollars. So in order to demonstrate that to you, we have the next page, which is the pricing schedule. And the pricing schedule is interesting because it also shows you the yields and the prices that are sold to the investors. If you look at the, the, the bottom, kind of the block of words that starts with net effective, okay, the net effective rate is a 4012. The true interest rate, which takes into consideration the premium dollars of the 1,952, then produces the true interest rate of the 4.001%. So that kind of helps you tie this together in terms of where those numbers are coming from and the results. Now that would complete the exhibits to your resolution. The page after that is informational um, to let you know that with this financing and these results, the water utility has 2004 safe drinking water loans outstanding, which is done through the state of Wisconsin's program, and it has this $4.9 million issue. Before we did this financing, the utility had 1989 bonds outstanding at, a, at that 7.4%, which we talked about. And so that's why the schedule is, is listed as after refunding. 
In addition to this, and now I'm kind of skipping back to my first page, um, the very bottom paragraph of my first page is because on August 1, you also adopted a resolution that there, there really wasn't a follow-up, but I wanted to follow that through and let you know that um, on Oct August 1, there was a resolution you adopted establishing an escrow for the 1990 revenue bonds. Those revenue bonds are outstanding at about 7.2 and 7.3 percent. But we couldn't call them this year. We couldn't stop the interest until next year. So to try and defease those bonds and to defease the covenants from the 89 and 90 bonds, so we're starting with a fresh resolution and fresh covenants. We provided for those bonds by creating an escrow. That means we bought treasuries, special securities from the U.S. Treasury that's priced by the Treasury daily. So today's the day that we bought the treasuries. And the treasuries cost, I have listed there, is 582.911.75. This is coming from utility funds on hand. A significant portion of that is utility funds on hand that can only be used or restricted purpose for debt service, part of the reserve fund that was created for those bonds. So, um, and then um, the rest of it is utility funds um, that, that are being contributed to the purchase price of these securities. Once those securities are paid for, which will happen on September 1st, we now have an escrow. That escrow will be held by J.P. Morgan as escrow agent. The 90 bonds are totally defeased, and the, um, there will be a auditor verification report by McGladry and Pullen as to yield and sufficiency. And that assures the city and the utility that that escrow indeed will cover those payments to the bondholders so that you don't hear later on that there wasn't enough money or that someone's going to come back to you looking for payments. So that will uh, also be supplied to the city and the utility. By creating this escrow and stopping that interest payment, the utility is saving about $50,000. By refinancing the 1989 bonds with the, part of the money from this $4.9 million, the utility is saving $45,970. So you can see with this action as a whole, this we call this the financial plan for the water utility, that we are saving um, $95,970 in this, in this financing process. So that is the explanation of why you have page 7 on this report. It says escrow fund cash flow. And that is speaking to that last paragraph. And that escrow fund has columns of principal rate and interest. That is speaking to the treasuries that we bought. That's the principal amount, the interest rate from the, from the federal government, and the interest that those treasuries spin off. And the column that says disbursement, that's the 1990 revenue bonds. So the cost of that investment is, um, again, in the middle of the page, total cost of investments, and the yield on those is listed as 3.86%. Now, can I answer any questions? Are there any questions? Good job. Thank you. Okay. Would you like me now to cover the next resolution? Please. Okay. Very good. Um, the other handout addresses both the um, item uh, 1049 and 1050. One of them, they are both general obligation refunding bonds. They are divided into two because one 3,595 issue is refinancing debt that was done all for TIF 3. So that's why we created an issue just for TIF 3. The other financing is refinancing existing debt that was primarily done for city capital improvement plan projects and a very small portion for TIF 10. So that's the reason why we have two separate issues. Again, in my summary on page one, I have it in a similar format. And that's why we use that same document when we distributed them nationwide. We have different interests and different bidders, um, one for revenue bonds, one for general obligation bonds. Also, our rating, we have a very different rating process for them. We have two ratings. We have a Moody's Investors, excuse me, Investor Service rating and a Standard & Poor's rating. Moody's has reconfirmed the city's general obligation rating 
as double A3. Standard & Poor's has reconfirmed the general obligation rating as double A minus. And these are very comparable ratings. Moody's uses, as you can see by my memo, a, a large A, small A, and numbers like one, two, and three next to them. Standard & Poor's always uses two capital A's and a minus or a plus or no, no um, number or plus, I should say no symbol next to it. So for a Moody's double A three is an exact comparable to a standard and poor's double A minus. Okay. I show you on page one, the second paragraph, that the series A bonds here is refinancing 91 bonds that are outstanding at a 6.08% and 93 bonds outstanding at a 5.66%. And we also are, with series B, we're refinancing 95 bonds out at a 528 and 98 notes at a 420. Um, I have these again presented as far as the exhibits to the resolutions that you currently have because that is what is missing to make the resolution complete. So uh, council approval of this resolution as well as the prior resolution, or actually all three I should say, locks in the interest rates that you are seeing tonight. The city and utility will receive the money on September 1, but you are not at risk in terms of market movement. You lock in and award the bonds to the appropriate winners tonight. And when the city and utility receive their money, then they can invest it until they need it for either paying off the existing debt or for their utility projects. So I've shown you on page one also the expenses of issuance associated with both of these financings. And I will then walk you through the um, page two, which is the sale results for our general obligation uh, issue. First of all, um, I want to show you that we have savings. We're doing this strictly for savings. So the Series A bonds, we have savings of 295254 And you can see how the, that savings occurs. It's comparing the 3595 issue to the two outstanding 91 and 93 bonds. The bottom part of page two shows you the Series B, which is taking the new 3140 actual debt service and comparing that to the 95 and 98 notes. The actual savings on that issue is 91,752. The winning bidder on our Series A, we had 10 bids on that financing. And the winning bidder was Griffin Cubic, Stevens and Thompson out of Chicago at a true interest rate of 3.219. And with the Series B, we had eight bids. And that winning bidder was UBS Financial at a 3.11209. And I will walk through the exhibits with you. We have them in the same order. Uh, in this case, they're called exhibits A, B, and C. They are separated by a blue divider uh, to uh, indicate which resolution they belong to. So if we want to turn to page three, that is exhibit A for the 3,595 issue. You will see there the list of the 10 bidders and that we have a true interest rate of 3.219 as our winning bid, and then ranges all the way to the 342. You also get to see you know, where the bids came from. We have uh, various um, states that we took bids from today. Exhibit B is the bid form from Griffin Cubic. Again, uh, notice in the first paragraph, they're paying a premium of $16,542 to the city. And then again, their interest rates the bottom block, uh, not a part of the bid, is the calculation that takes you to 3.219. We take those interest rates, put them into page five. That is now the repayment schedule for the 3,595. The bottom, uh, if you look at the rate column, look to the bottom, it says average coupon. Again, coupon means interest rate, and that shows you a 3.37 does not include the premium of 16,500 coming back to the city. That is shown on page six. You will see under the uh, schedule the words net effective, a 323, and true interest of 32196. So that is the result then for the resolution on the 3,005. Then we have a divider for the next resolution with again those same exhibits. You have now this is your list of bidders for that issue. We have eight bids. The winning bid being 3.11209, 
from UBS Financial, which is the same firm that won the bid on the revenue bonds. The next page eight is the bid form, and you will see there they are paying a premium of $9,101 to the city at those interest rates, and the calculation is at the bottom. Page nine takes those interest rates and inserts them into the repayment schedule. The average rate of that on that page is 3.26, does not include the premium. Page 10 is a schedule showing you the effect of the premium for the true interest rate of the 3.11. Thank you, Carol. Yes. Are there any questions? All over Stefan. Uh, not a question. I would just state that the uh, Board of Water Commissioners met with the Finance Committee before the meeting, and we did approve all these bids. Thank you. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I know that you had mentioned that our, our rating right now is a double A minus. And after listening to the mayor's presentation about how close we are to the maximum of our uh, borrowing capacity, um, if the city were to borrow more than the borrowing capacity and we were, jeopardi were to jeopardize our double A minus rating, I don't know if we fall into the double B plus category after that, what impact would that have on the interest rate in future borrowing for the city? If our, our rating dropped, would the interest rate then go up for future borrowing? Well, first of all, it just as a general statement, a credit rating is what determines your interest rate. So always the better your credit rating, the better your interest rate. I mean, that's, that's the way, that's the reason why you always want to have a good credit rating. Another general statement is that there are several things that impact your, a city's um, credit rating. And Believe me, you can ask rating agencies all day long, what if I do this? Then what happens to our, what, our, what will happen to our credit rating? And you will never get a straight answer, okay? Because it is not just one factor. Many times you have to look at, um, you look at wealth levels, you look at the ability to pay, the ability to tax, you look at what's going on in your community as a whole, the type of development, administration, uh, fund balance, policies, um, the economics and demographics of your area, the financials of the city, and rating agencies like historical trend. They don't make decisions based on one-year actions. They, they make their decisions on historical trends. So, so that would be somewhat unfair for me to give you that type of a, of a, of a reaction because it would incorporate a lot of, of factors. And um, they're not going to tell you that they're going to upgrade you or downgrade you for, for one particular thing because it really has a lot of, um, of analysis to get to their credit report, okay? But, but that's the reason why, you know, we work together and that we always, you know, bounce things off of credit, credit rating, uh, credit agencies if, um, and not just how much debt you're issuing, but other policies and considerations that um, may be, uh, proposed um, because they look at more than just the one factor. Okay. Thank you, Carol. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I simply wanted to thank Carol Worth for explaining it so well, very clearly. I understand it. I thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Carol. Appreciate that. Okay. Thank you. We will call the roll. We have before us a resolution to a motion to put resolution 1048, 1049 upon their passage. And 1050. And what? All three. All three. Yep. And 1050. Okay. Okay. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? D. Berg, Aye. E. Berg, Aye. Serta, Aye. Davis, Aye. and Kittleson. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1051, Alderman Montemayor. They're separate. There's a motion to, to put 1051 upon its passage. Is there a second? Second, under discussion. Not. All those in favor, please state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 
1052, Alderman Berg, Eberg. Uh, yes, thank you, Your Honor. I, I move that the uh, resolution be put upon its passage. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. There's a second under discussion. Alderman Montemayor. Oh, no, that's no. the light from before. Thank you. Alderman Segali. And it, uh, thank you, Mayor and Common Council. It was referred to in the in the presentation from the standpoint that it's four wooded acres, and that it be maintained for you know, either park and or green space purposes. And I think the intention was more of um, if it was used as park purposes, some type of passive recreation, and not a you know. Uh, I think the intent was more to protect that four acres of trees that are in that area. Thank you. Okay. I'm sorry. Are you going? We, we, we can take the vote. That's fine. Take the vote? Sure. Okay. We will take the roll call on 1052. Uh, Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Thank you. D. Berg, Aye. E. Berg, Aye. Serta, Aye. Davis, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. Manny, Aye. and Meyer. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1053 will lie over. Excuse me, Mayor. I'm, I'm sorry. Could we take one minute to sign the documents oh, for Carol? Oh, absolutely. Could you just excuse us for one minute? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gebhardt. Okay, 1053, as I said, will lie over. 1054 and 1055 to be referred. 1056 to be referred. Report of committees, 1057. Alderman, is it Manny? Thank you, Honor. I move we accept and adopt the report of committee by law and licensing. Recommending denying beverage operators license number 5419 based on failure to cooperate with the committee and failure to reveal all violations on the application. Second. There's a motion and a second under discussion. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Honor. I uh, want to ask if Richard Shulak is here. Is Richard Shulak here? Your Honor, he is not here. Thank you, Alderman Manny. We will take a roll call. Yes. Radke? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Van Akron, Vanderweel, Aye. Bauman, Aye. D. Berg, Aye. E. Berg, Aye. Serta, Aye. Davis, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. and Montemayor. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries 1058. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. By law and licensing, uh, move we accept and adopt report of the committee. Uh, recommending filing the document, submitting communication from Blue Harbor. Approving they're holding the Oktoberfest event in September and granting permission to use city property 
so that people may freely walk around the area to the east of the building with alcoholic beverages. There's a motion, there's a second? Second. Second, under discussion? If not, please call the roll. So. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Common? Aye. Deberg? Aye. Eberg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. And Radke? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1059 to be referred. 1060 by law and licensing. Alderman Manny? Thank you, Your Honor. On behalf of law and licensing, I move that we accept and adopt the report of the committee revoking the alcohol license number 1972 for Three Gems Incorporated based on the facts and findings from the quasi-judicial hearing held on August 9th. Second. There's a motion and a second. Under discussion? Under discussion, Your Honor, is Christopher Dimoff here? Is Christopher Dimoff here? Your Honor, he is not here. He accepts the decisions of the committee and he plans to sell the business. Okay. Any more discussion? If not, we'll call the roll. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. And Sigali? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1062 will lie over. 1063 and 1064 to be referred. Matters laid over. 948, resolution number 870506 by Ola Person Berg, authorizing the city of Sheboygan to apply for copyright and trademark of its logo and tagline to ensure many future years of exclusive use. Alderman E. Berg. Uh, yes, thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put in its passage. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Under discussion? Yes, under discussion. Now, this is an issue that surfaced from time to time uh, when organizations would come to us and ask for permission uh, to use the city uh, logo, which is behind us. Uh, I think in the past it's typically been denied because it, uh, it implied an endorsement of whatever the activity was. Currently, there's no restriction on use of that particular uh, logo or indicia. For example, I could buy a tavern tomorrow call it Sheboygan Spirits on the Lake and point to every city truck as advertising my business. Uh, this would offer the city a remedy in terms of protection of that particular uh, logo and uh, also still allow permitted use and perhaps even drive a little revenue into our coffers. Uh, my understanding from Attorney McLean is that this is not an overnight process, is that it involves an application uh, to uh, the Federal Patent Office and, or the Copyright Office and therefore will likely take several uh, months to complete and get permission. Uh, thank you, Alderman Berg. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, it's my understanding that to have a registered trademark for the Sheboygan logo is going to run approximately six to seven thousand dollars, and um, I think it's too much. And I'm curious if you could tell me where the money's coming from. Perhaps I could support this, but until I find out where we're going to get the six to seven thousand dollars from I don't think I can support this at that time at this time thank you Alderman Vanderwill thank you your honor uh, I agree with Alderman Susha my comments are going to be the same as how much was it going to cost and you had mentioned Alderman Berg you had mentioned that it was going to bring in revenue and I was wondering how that was going to bring in revenue also I think in terms of the revenue picture, if it's permitted use, I doubt the city is going to have its own designer clothing, but it could allow, for example, a small fee every time the logo was used as part of, if you would, a promotion of Sheboygan, or if somebody wished to develop a product that would have uh, the logo on it, it would be reasonable to charge a permission fee for something like that. And again, I can't speak to the cost. Perhaps Attorney McLean might be able to uh, better address what uh, a copyright would, would run. I'm unfamiliar with that part of it. Thank you, Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, now, doesn't the city have T-shirts made up with um, Spirit on the Lake, Sheboygan Spirit on the Lake, where uh, is, isn't, wasn't that protected? I, I guess I'm not understanding why all of a sudden we were deciding to do it since all in the past that I, did, I didn't think it was being abused. That's what my question is. The 
city of Sheboygan spirit on the lake is on everything the city does. It's on city trucks, it's here, it's on our letterhead, it's on everything the city has any affiliation or association with. And I believe all, what Alderman Berg is trying to do and what I would ultimately support, $6,000 is really not a lot of money to complain about at this point, at least in my mind. What's being done here in my mind protects the city from any future unauthorized use of our logo and our tagline by anyone, it doesn't matter who it is. And Alderman Berg is right, anybody, anybody could take that tagline, take it anywhere in the world, and use it, and make look like they're representing us, there's nothing we can do about it. So all it is is a protection against the city. Now the Alderman, you may want to vote it down, that's fine, just be apprised that you've been told that if anybody uses that tagline and that logo unauthorized, we're going to have to live with that decision. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, six to seven thousand dollars is a mere pittance compared to what it would cost us to go and redo all the squad cars, the trucks, the city letterhead, all the city buildings, all the signages in the parks, the marina, what have you. This is a it's a it's a no no brainer as far as I'm concerned. We need to protect our image here and our trademark and our logo. And just the cost of trying to come up with something new is going to cost us more than six or seven thousand dollars, and changing everything out. Companies trademark their names for a simple reason so that nobody can use it and I think we should do the same. Alderman Davis. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just for information, could a private citizen like me uh, copyright that and pay my six or seven thousand dollars and have that as my trademark or logo? Yes, unless it's, unless uh, someone else had uh, uh, registered it prior to that. Yeah. And, and, and if, if I could, Your sure. Honor, uh, as, as far as the cost question, I don't have a clue. Um, I don't know what it costs to trademark or copyright something. Uh, if there's going to be a cost to it, I think that should be recognized. I, I don't know how extensive it is. I've never, never done it before. As far as uh, you know, why it wasn't done originally when the logo was uh, adopted uh, back in, I don't know when it was, I think in the uh, 80s or early 90s. Uh, it was a conscious decision of the council at that time and uh, with the recommendation of the uh, uh, director of uh, uh, city development that the, the logo be uh, open to wide use that uh, anybody could use it and that uh, that would be positive for the city to get the logo out. Uh, I'm not, uh, and I'm not going to take a position one way or the other whether it's better to, uh, to keep it uh, unregistered, untrademarked, uh, or to, uh, to, to try to protect the logo. Uh, I just, just want to say that that was a conscious council decision at that time and things change. Uh, you may have a different perception today and that's perfectly understandable. Um, I, I would say that uh, while, uh, you know, to a certain extent the city is in the business of government, uh, we're a little bit different than a private corporation as far as protecting our product names and things like that from competition. We don't really compete with anybody. I mean, we're here, we're the city of Sheboygan and uh, you know maybe some other city somewhere else wants to call themselves Spirit on the Lake and you could say that that's competition and we could preclude them from doing that if we uh, registered uh, the logo and so forth but it's uh, you know it was a conscious decision then and certainly a different council can have a different perspective and uh, decide that they want to take a different course and that's perfectly uh, perfectly a reasonable thing to do I think uh, Alderman Susha has a good point that there is a cost to doing it and uh, you need to be aware that there is a cost and unfortunately I can't tell you what that cost is. Under discussion, Your Honor, this is relative to establishing a use district classification on annex property. Anyone, anytime, anywhere, the danger is there. 
It's up to this council if you want to do it or not. You've been uh, apprised. Alderman Manny, you're next, sir. Thank you, Adam. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it, you're next, after him. Uh, two comments. Number one, uh, responding to Steve McQueen's comments, I believe we could approve use of the logo um, and have a process for doing so so that it could be widely used for appropriate events. Mm -hmm. Secondarily, I believe we have a legal fund. I want to ask Rich Gebhardt uh, what dollars uh, remain in that fund unspent for this year. Uh, for appropriate legal costs, this might fall under that category. Rich, please address that. Mr. Gephardt, if you're able to. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not connected to the computer up here, so I really don't have that, that exact knowledge of what balances are, are available at this point. Um, but certainly, uh, given an opportunity, I can, uh, I'll try to research that as quickly as possible. But, um, I don't know if, if city attorney remembers anything on his budget that it, it's for legal fees, that any balances for they currently have on there. No, there's uh, an insurance fund that I have. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Kepler. Alderman of an Akron. Steve, I got a question for you. What if somebody is using that logo now and we haven't got it in yet? Can he use it after we we get it in? That's uh, a good question, Alderman Van Akron. Um, I don't honestly know. I guess my off the cuff opinion would be that they could continue to use it. I think they were using it prior to it being protected, um, but I can't answer that with certainty. I think that's the case. Alderman Deberg. Thank you, Your Honor. Well, we just saw the pie chart that you had. State's going to give us this money. We got this money. We're not going to get any more. Now, all of a sudden, six, seven thousand dollars is a pittance. I don't think six, seven thousand dollars is a pittance. I'm not going to support this. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. I guess to me there's too many questions. Um, I'd like to make a motion to send this to law and licensing so that we can maybe get a handle on how much revenue it would create and if we can make up the six or 7000 or how much, you know, because prices go up, maybe it's 13000 now. I'm not sure how accurate your numbers were, but uh, I'd make a motion to send it to law and licensing. Well, we, have a motion, we have a motion to the floor right now. If that doesn't pass, you can move to refer it. Alderman Stefan. Yes, President. Okay. Motion to refer to law and licensing. Was there a second? Second. Second. Any discussion with that? All those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion carries. Okay. Resolution number 955. Uh, resolution number 880506 by Alderman Stefan calling on the Congress of the United States to reject plans to privatize Social Security by cutting Social Security guaranteed benefits and diverting money out of the Social Security into the private investment accounts. Alderman Stefan. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, seeing as how this is just an advisory resolution, I would move to put it on its passage. Second. There's a motion, a second to put the resolution upon its passage. Under discussion? Alderman Susha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as an elder person, I don't feel comfortable telling Congress what to do with Social Security. I don't have enough information in regards to what type of uh, privatization they're looking at. I haven't researched this because as an alderman, I don't feel that it's my role to advise Congress on, on what to do here. So I am unable to support this at that, this time. Thank you. Any further discussion? Alderman Eberg. Uh, Along with Alderman Susha, I think I will also uh, ask for a roll call vote and, and do ex abstain. I uh, started to look at this, and when you Google Social Security reform, you get 15,800,000 hits. Uh, this is perhaps one of those proposals that honestly I didn't have time in the 15 minutes before council to look at the 15 million. So for that purpose, I'd like to abstain. Okay. So please call the roll. <clears throat> Stefan. Aye. Susha. No. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Deberg. Aye. Eberg. Serta. 
Davis? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? No. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. And Sagali? Aye. Twelve ayes, two noes, and one abstention. Motion carries. 956, resolution number 890506 of the amended agenda by Alderman Groff, Stefan, and Montemayor authorizing the transfer of appropriations in the 205 budget. Alderman Stefan. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Could I also take 957 with that? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I would so move. There's a motion to uh, put resolutions 956 and 957 upon their passage under discussion. And there's second under discussion. If not, please call the roll. <clears throat> Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Deberg, Aye. Eberg, Aye. Serta, Aye. Davis, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Sigali, Aye. and Stefan. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 979, resolution number 910506 by Alderman Meyer and Montemayor, authorizing a referendum election to be held on the next April 206 election on the question of whether or not to issue general obligation bonds in the amount not to exceed eight million dollars for the public purpose of paying for the cost of a new police station. Alderman Meyer. I move that the resolution be put upon his passage. There's a motion and a second. The resolution be put upon his passage under discussion. Alderman Meyer. Um, I've received a lot of phone calls, emails from people that feel that $17 million is way too much money to be spending on a new police station, and I feel $8 million is sufficient amount. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I know I voted for the $17 million cap on the bonding, but this has to do with the community wanting a referendum, and they didn't have enough signatures because we know they ran out of time. But I talked to one of the canvassers, and she said to me that of the 100 people she talked to and doors she knocked on, 98 wanted to sign this. So I thought, wow, that's a big percentage of the people she talked to. And these were cold calls that she just knocked on doors. So that made me want to let the community put their input into this. Thank you. Alderman Deberg. Thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> First of all, that 17 million is, like Alderman Groff and him explained, they just didn't pick it out, it was for purpose. But first of all, we gotta have a location for the police department. Once we have a site, that's when we sit down with the designers, and you see what you actually need. And I'll bet you a dollar a donut. It doesn't go near $14 million or maybe $13 million. I doubt it very much. Thank you, Alderman Berg. Alderman Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. I think as older persons, we owe the public also an explanation on what, how we arrive at those numbers. We are not professional architects, and unless I have Zimmerman telling me here tonight that this $8 million is feasible and how that's going to re relate to our city's needs and policing unit, um, I can't support this. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I just want to state that I didn't receive any phone calls regarding the referendum. And a few people that called me asking about other things, they said, what referendum? And uh, I just think it's premature because we don't have a site. We don't even know if we're going to build a police station. And so I, I just think it's premature. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I think that some of us have it a little backwards. We're looking to the architect to tell us how much money he needs to build this grandiose police station. When I look at it from the other view, where it's our job as older people to set the limit and hold the architect and the builders to a certain level that we feel we can afford. I mean, if you read the last whereas, it says the principal and interest payment for the new police station, $17 million debt issuance, is estimated to increase the tax levy for debt service by over a million dollars by 2008. I mean, even if you're talking about $14 million, 
we've seen the numbers here tonight. We cannot afford this type of debt. So I think that we tell them that instead of using solid gold bricks to build this police station, they have to use silver plated bricks and that will bring down the cost dramatically. It's our job to set the limits, not to give them the right to write their own check and let them set the, the limits. And they will function appropriately within the parameters that we set for them. So I will support this $8 million because I do think that that is our job. Thank you. Alderman Rutke. Thank you, Your Honor. I too will support the $8 million referendum issue <coughs> before us. After touring the Janesville, Wisconsin Police Department just last week and taking a look at what the Zimmerman Design Group built for these people in Janesville for $4.67 million, although there are some major differences in what we're looking at here and what they're looking at there, I am of the belief we can get this done for well under $8 million um, in a timely fashion. The only difference we have here and a point I want to make with this is um, the city of Sheboygan is not doing what Janesville had done. You're right, we don't have a site yet. But James will look ahead over 15 years, which we didn't do, and that's where our major hang-up is right now, and that's where our price is going up, up, and up. They worked there's over 15-year period, so I'll support it. Thank you. Alderman Manning. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, in my thinking, uh, I don't see any way fiscally that we're going to build a $17 million police station. Uh, if we chose to do that, we'd be basically uh, firing policemen and firemen and public works folks. We'd have a building without staff. The only viable approach I think that's feasible is to do a two-stage build and have Zimmerman directed to that end. We can debate which site for another time. Um, so my perspective on this is to vote the uh, ordinance down, not have a referendum, but I'll be encouraging a decision that we spend $8 million much prior to April. This will not even be a decision in my mind at that point. We will, as a council, have voted $8 million, and that's it. Alderman D. Burks, your second time. Here we go. This is true. Oh, okay. I'll make it a good one. Alderman Shusha is absolutely right. Once we get that site made, we dictate to the architect what we need. All our person, Ratke says, Jamesville has one for 4.5 million. It has no communication center uh, system. It's got two holding cells. That's all they got. It's only good for 15 years. Then they're going to start adding on. So what has what has uh, Janesville got? They got an office building that's being occupied by police officers. Alderman Stephan. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I too will support the eight million dollars spending on a police station. But what I won't support is waiting for a referendum. You know, I think part of what Alderman Burke said is right. Right. Part of what Alderperson Shusha said is right. You know, we can't dictate. Because we don't know. We haven't been told, okay, $8 million. What do we get for our $8 million? I can't stand here today. Of course I'd rather have spent 8 than 17 but if it says, if he says the only way I can spend $8 million is if it doesn't do the communication systems, well, then we've got to turn to the police and fire and say, well, what does that mean? Where do we put that? Does the county do that for us? Are they going to give us money? What's the charge there? We haven't gotten the documentation, and we wouldn't want the documentation yet because if we had it for one site, we'd have to have it for five sites, and we'd just be paying a whole lot more for architecture when we're not going to use it. I think... Once we zero in on a site, then we can say, like, I, the only thing I've heard so far, when Mr. Sabinash was here, he mentioned food service. And I thought, well, oh, I'm going to have to look at this and convince me we need food service there. I don't know how much room it costs. I don't know what the cost is. But the other details we haven't seen. And I think that's what we've got to wait for. I totally, I tell people day, day and day, you know, yeah, this is what he said he needs. But, you know, he builds them for a living. You know, he builds them to his goals. That may be ours, it may not be ours. But I think... We don't know what we're cutting until we see what's in there. So I would agree that we need less of a police station, but I can't support this because I don't want to wait till April to find out. And even then, what, what, what do we do if it, if it passes? We have $8 million. If it loses, then what? Will you do another referendum? I just, you know, I don't see any sense in waiting. Alderman Eberg. Uh, thank you. To, I guess to follow up with what Alderman Stephan was talking about, this, it's uh, August 15th. This will put a hold on any planning until April 15th. April 15th is also a general election. Some of us likely will not be sitting here on April 15th. Therefore, we'll have a, a new council, which will probably want to take a fresh look, which likely will then put virtually any decision much 
into August of next year before we can actually sit down, even if you have $8 million to work with. I think uh, the $8 million may be a very realistic figure, but to have a referendum cast at this time, six months before the date, I, I, that's what I can't support. Thank you. Alderman Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, and just for clarification, um, I do take my job seriously, and I realize that I do have to answer to my public. And if I would got a phone call tomorrow asking why I capped this at $8 million, I couldn't give an answer. I need to know what that means in terms of square footage and our service. And I think this is putting the cart before the horse. And until I get those answers, I can't support this. I know it would make me look good that I'm holding down spending and throwing out these numbers, but I got to have information to back up my vote. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. It's good to hear the alderman, everyone, every alderman who's spoken to say it's not going to cost the 17 million. I'm very glad to hear that, that it's going to be cut a lot. Thank you. OK, please call the roll. OK. I vote would be for a referendum. Is everybody clear on that? OK. Van Akron? No. Vanderweel? No. Bauman? No. Deberg? No. Eberg? No. Serta? No. Davis? No. Kittleson? No. Manny? No. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sagali? Stefan no. and Susha. Aye. Four eyes, 12 no's. I'm sorry, 11 no's. Motion fails. 968 General Ordinance number 240506 by Alderman Vanderweel, Montemayor, Ratke, and Meyer relating to no parking any time so as to add the north side of New Jersey Avenue from the west curb line of South 22nd Street to a point of 125 feet west. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. Could I take 969 with that also? Yes. Which uh, 969 is a general ordinance to uh, relate no parking any time as to add the south side of Washington Avenue from the west curb line of South 12th Place to a point 50 west. And I would make a motion to put those general ordinance upon their passage. <coughs> There's a mo motion, a second to put uh, General Ordinance 968, 969 upon their passage under discussion. Not. Call the roll. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Deberg? Aye. Eberg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sagali? Aye. Stefan? Susha Aye. and Van Akron. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 974 will be referred to Committee of the Whole. Other matters authorized by law. Nine, uh, 1065 will be referred to Public Works. 1066 will be referred to Capital Improvements Commission. 1067 will be referred to Public Works. Other matters? That will be referred to Capital Improvements and Public Protection and Safety. 1069 is a communication from Susan Cott, Sales and Marketing Manager of Terrace Estates, regarding concerns with the safety of seniors living at Terrace Estates when they walk on Ivor Avenue. And that will be referred to Capital Improvements and Public Protection and Safety. 1070 is a resolution authorizing the Lao Mon and American Veterans Memorial Committee to erect a memorial honoring those who served in the secret war in Laos in Deland Park near Ontario Avenue where visibility, accessibility, and parking needs for the memorial would be met. And that will be referred to Public Works. Excuse me, ma'am. I'm sorry, excuse me. Excuse, excuse me. me. Um, this should also go to Architectural Review and Historic Preservation. I didn't have that on That will be referred to Architectural, Architectural Review and Historic Preservation. And Public Works. And Public Works. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 1071 is a communication from Matt Driscoll of James Madison Elementary School requesting a safety study be conducted to determine whether city crossing guards are necessary before and after school for the safety of students as there have been several concerns regarding the crossing of two intersections near the school, George Avenue and South 22nd Street and David Avenue and South 22nd Street. That will go to public protection and safety. 
1072 is a communication from Tu Li of TCL Fashions of the Orient requesting a two-hour parking limit along the west side of North 13th Street between Michigan and Huron Avenues during business hours. And that will go to public protection and safety also. There's a motion second to adjourn. All those in favor, state aye. Aye. Stand adjourned. Eldon.